Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Snowbeck. Today we're going to do Unit 6, Lesson 1. This is the very first lesson of Geometry B. And today's lesson is actually a review of some things you already know and then a few new things as well. The first thing is the Pythagorean Theorem, which I think you guys are pretty familiar with. It's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Remember, you have to have a right triangle in order to use the Pythagorean Theorem, and the C is always your longest side. It's across from the 90 degrees. That's called the hypotenuse. So the C is always your hypotenuse, and the other two sides are called legs, and so those are gonna be the A and the B, and it doesn't matter which one is which. So like for number one, if we have two of the sides of a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. So we can do six squared plus 15 squared equals x squared. Now six squared is 36, 15 squared is 225. You're gonna add those together, which is 261. And then you have x squared equals 261, so to get rid of the squared, you have to do the square root. And hopefully you remember how to do this on the calculator. You probably have to hit the second button and then the x squared button, because there's a little square root right above that x squared button. So when you do that, x should be approximately 16.16. And um, go ahead and try that. Make sure you know how to type that into your calculator. It does make sense that it's 16.16. It should be the longest side in the triangle, but not much longer than 6 and 15. Will you please pause the video and try number 2? So you should have done 7 squared plus 17 squared equals c squared, or x squared, I guess I'll put. So that is 49 plus 289 equals x squared. And if you add 49 plus 289, you get 338. And then take the square root. And the square root of 338 is approximately 18.38. So take a minute, see if you can set up number three. Now remember, your C has to be across from the 90 degree angle. So you should have x squared plus 9 squared equals 11 squared. It's okay if you switched around the x and the 9, but the 11 has to be your C. So it's x squared plus 81 equals 121. Then subtract your 81, x squared equals 40, and then you have to take the square root of 40. I'm typing it in my calculator here quick, and I got x equals 6.32. It makes sense that it is shorter than 11. Please pause the video. Try number four. So you can see we have a little right triangle here with the ladder. We're trying to basically figure out how long that ladder needs to be. So you should do 5 squared plus 12 squared equals x squared or c squared. Any letter will do. So you have 25 plus 144. You add those together. It is 169. And then you take the square root. And you do get a nice number, which is 13. So 13 feet is the length of that ladder if it goes exactly to the window. Now maybe you could use a 15 foot ladder and kind of set it off to the side. Or if you had a 12 foot ladder, it'd be a little short, but maybe you could hoist yourself up in there. Next I wanna talk about Pythagorean triples. So Pythagorean triples are numbers that work out perfectly without decimals when you do the Pythagorean theorem. So for instance, if you do three squared plus four squared equals five squared, 9 plus 16 equals 25. Well, 9 plus 16 is 25. It balances out. And so 3, 4, and 5 are considered to be a Pythagorean triple. Now, if you double all those numbers and you get 6, 8, and 10, you will get another Pythagorean triple. I'm just going to prove it to you. Um, if you do 6 squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared, you get 36 plus 64 equals 100. And that is 100 if you add 36 plus 64, so it balances out. 
If you multiply 3, 4, and 5 by 3, you get 9, 12, and 15. That will be another Pythagorean triple. So basically, if you take 3 times any number, 4 times that same number, and 5 times that same number, you'll get another Pythagorean triple. The same is true for 5, 12, and 13. Remember from our last problem, the length of the ladder, well you had a 5, you had a 12, and then the length of the ladder was 13. That made a Pythagorean triple. If you double them, you get 10, 24, 26. That makes another Pythagorean triple. If you multiply by 3, you get 15, uh, 36, and 39. That makes a Pythagorean triple. And basically, if you take 5 times any number, 12 times that same number and 13 times that same number, you'll get another set of Pythagorean triples. Will you please fill in the third column? The original Pythagorean triple is 7, 24, and 25. Will you multiply them by 2, multiply them by 3, and then put the x's in? So go ahead and pause the video and fill in that column. All right, here's a quick peek of what you should have put in there. Hopefully you got them right. So we know that if a squared plus b squared actually equals the c squared, then your triangle will end up being a right triangle. The Pythagorean theorem only works in right triangles. But what happens if you do a squared plus b squared and it doesn't equal c squared? In fact, what happens if c squared is less than a squared plus b squared? Well, in that case, you're going to wind up with an acute triangle. If the c squared is less than a squared plus b squared. On the other hand, if c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, you will wind up with a obtuse, an obtuse triangle. So again, if c squared is greater than the a squared plus b squared added together, then you're gonna wind up with an obtuse triangle. Let's try a couple. Number five, determine whether each set of numbers can be the measures of the sides of a triangle. If so, classify the triangle as acute, right, or obtuse. Okay, so we're given three measures, 7, 14, and 16, and we have to figure out, first of all, can we make a triangle out of these numbers or these side lengths? The first thing you have to check is the two shorter sides have to add up to be more than the third side. So 7 plus 14 is 21, and 21 is greater than 16, so yes, we can make a triangle. Again, add the two smaller sides to see if they add up to be more than the third side. Because what could happen is, like, if this was 16, and let's say we had a side of 7, and let's say we had a side of 5, there's no way to even make a triangle out of that. The sides would be too short. So that's the first thing we have to check. The two smaller sides have to add up to be greater than the third side. Next, we have to figure out what kind of triangle will we have. So now we do the Pythagorean theorem. We do 7 squared plus 14 squared, and we see how does it compare to the 16 squared. So we get 49 plus 196, and then we get 256. Now if I add 49 plus 196, that is 245. So you can see they are not equal to each other, which means this is not going to be a right triangle. In this case, the C, or the biggest side, was greater than the other two. And when the C squared is greater than the A squared plus B squared, then it will be an obtuse triangle. Let's try another one. So first of all, if we're given the numbers 9, 40, and 41, can we even make a triangle? Remember, take the two smaller ones, add them together. We get 49. 49 is greater than 41, so yes, we can make a triangle. The two smaller sides have to add up to be more than the third side. Now, to check what kind of triangle, we're going to do Pythagorean theorem. So 9 squared plus 40 squared, and we're going to see how does that compare to 41 squared. So we get 81 plus 1,600, and then 41 squared is 1,681. If we add the left side, we also get 1,681. Oh, they're equal to each other. Guess what kind of triangle we have? We have a right triangle. 
All right, last but not least, if you have the numbers 1, 7, and 8, can you make a triangle? Well, 1 plus 7 is 8. It's not greater than 8. So no, we're not going to be able to make a triangle. Think about if you had a side length of 8 and then a 1 and then a 7. As they come down and lower, where will they touch? Well, they'd be all the way flat before they would actually touch. It would make a segment, not a triangle. Let's try number 6. So number 6, we're going to do the Pythagorean theorem. We have a right triangle, and we're going to try to solve for x. So we're going to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Determine which side is going to be your C. X is going to be your C. So the other two, it doesn't matter which one goes in for A, which one goes in for B, but you're going to have X minus 5 squared plus 8 squared equals X squared. Now, X minus 5 squared, that is a bit tricky. It's really the same as X minus 5 times X minus 5. 8 squared is 64, and X squared will just leave over there. What in the world do I do with x minus 5 times x minus 5? If you're thinking FOIL or box method, you're right. So you're going to have to, I always FOIL, so that means firsts, x times x is x squared. Then outsides, outsides are the x and the negative 5, so that's negative 5x. Then insides, which is negative 5 times x, so another negative 5x. And then lasts, which is 5 and 5. And they're negative, so negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. And then we have plus 64 equals x squared. So again, I did FOIL. You can also do box method if you like that way better. Combine your like terms. We can combine those and those. So x squared minus 10x. 25 plus 64 is 89 equals x squared. Now this is weird. I have x squareds on both sides of the equation. So I'm going to try to get those together. I'm going to minus the x squared and try to get it by the other one. These cancel out, but so do those. So I have negative 10x plus 89 equals 0. Hmm. Well, since I have a negative 10x, I'm going to add that to the other side. So then we have 89 equals positive 10x, divide by 10, 8.9 equals x. You did it, R2. Last one, number seven. Find the perimeter and the area of the figure below. Now this is stretching us a little bit. We've talked about perimeter, but we have not talked about area yet. We actually will later this trimester. But let's try this anyway. It's kind of fun to challenge ourselves. So perimeter of the figure means I have to find the distance all the way around the figure. So I'm going to add up 15 plus 12 plus 15 plus 7. Oh, plus this, which I don't know. So I'm going to need to find that missing side length first. And so what I'm going to do is the Pythagorean theorem, because I see this triangle right over here is going to be a right triangle. So I can do the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to do 12 squared plus 7 squared equals c squared. 144 plus 49 equals c squared. 144 plus 49 is 193. And then you take the square root. And the square root of 193 is not a great answer. It's not a nice number, but it is 13.89 is C. So I'm going to fill that in. Can I now find the perimeter around the entire shape? Yeah, the perimeter is going to be 15 plus 12 plus 15 plus 7 plus 39 or 13.89. I do not count this one because that's not part of the distance around the outside. And so let's go ahead and add all that up. So I'm going to add on a 15, a 12, a 15, and a 7. And I got 62.89, and we would label it centimeters. Now for the area. What I would do is I would probably at this point, just knowing what we've covered so far this year and we haven't really done any area, I would break this into two shapes. So I'm going to find the area of the rectangle here on the left. I'll outline it in blue. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but to find the area of a rectangle, it's going to be base times height, which in this case is 15 times 12, which is 180. 
Next, we're going to do the triangle over on the right. And the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. Now the base and the height have to be perpendicular in that triangle. So the base is going to be 7 and the height is going to be 12. So we're going to do 7 times 12 divided by 2. 7 times 12 is 84. 84 divided by 2 is 42. So what do we do with our two areas? We add them together. So total area is 180 plus 42, which is 222 square centimeters, or centimeters squared. And that's your area. Again, uh, that was a stretch. I know we haven't done area, but good, good job trying it out. So you, the next thing you're going to do is Unit 6, Practice 1. Also, make sure to get your syllabus signed and drop both of these things into Schoology for me. If you get stuck or need help on anything, please send me a Schoology message and have a great day.